Yo, what's going on, everybody? Week four is upon us already. You're going to blink. It's going to be Thanksgiving already. We're going to be like week 11 or week 12. So let's soak it in. There's no better time than this. I'm Dave Locker with Odd Shopper. We're talking Thursday night football. Green Bay Packers. Is that right? Detroit we're Lions. I'm going all out here. Look at that. We've got the full out background going. Get the colors. Get the names up there. Because this is actually a pretty fun game today. I think a lot of us are going to have many different opinions on this one. This is one where you may just want to go with how you feel, what you think is the best spot. I'm going to give you my lean. I've got a side for this one, a player prop, and then an anytime touchdown score. Tail if you'd like, fade if you'd like. After Monday, wouldn't blame you for fame. We were we were riding strong on these primetime games. Monday, not so much, but that's okay. We're back at it. Plenty of time to recover. I'll tell you what, though. It's pretty evenly matched, Matt. Uh, pretty even matchup. And, and some injuries on both sides of the field are going to shake things up for sure. Uh, when you look at this, this Lions team, they're one and a half point favorites on the road and money line anywhere from like minus 124 to minus 132 from everything I've seen. They are dealing with at least less injuries. So we can break it down from this angle. I'll give you my pick as well. They're dealing with less injuries than the Green Bay Packers right now because the Packers I mean, they're already on, you know, they, they already had a second string uh, tackle in there and Zach Tom, he might not play. David Bakhtiari, Elgin Jenkins are out. You're getting Aaron Jones and Christian Watson back, which is big, but we're already hearing that Christian Watson's going to be limited in this spot. I think Aaron Jones should be fine for what it's worth. And I'm a huge Aaron Jones fan. Uh, AJ Dillon stinks, man. You Packers fans out there, can you tell me I'm wrong? I wanted him to be good so bad, but he has not been good at all. Even in Aaron Jones' absence, you're splitting stat. I mean, if Patrick Taylor's coming in there and taking work away from you, I don't know what to tell you. But then on defense, the reports that I'm seeing, and I'm recording this at uh, 1045 Eastern time on Thursday. So you guys, if you're watching later, maybe things have changed. But that DeAndre, uh, or uh, sorry, Jair Alexander is also not expected to play. Vondre Campbell's out. They've got some banged up players here. And if and if Jair Alexander sits again, remember he missed last week against uh, Chris Olave and the Saints, they did come away with a win despite being down 17. That's another issue. On the Lions side, you've got some issues here. Um, nothing nothing major because Taylor Decker's exposed, expected to play uh, on the offensive line. Jonah Jackson, I think, is going to play. Halapulavati Vitae is out of this one, so that doesn't help. But they do, if, if they've got most of those guys in today, that's a pretty big difference here. And defensively, you know, outside of losing C.J. Gardner-Johnson earlier in the year, they look pretty okay. I'm looking at this from a couple of angles. One, Jordan Love has the lowest adjusted completion percentage in the league. Take that stat for what it's worth, right? But lowest in the league among any starters. He has played well enough to win right i mean for sure they're two and one they could have beat atlanta he's thrown seven touchdowns to one interception but he really hasn't faced a lot of adversity when it comes to pressure okay and he's only been pressured 21 percent of the time so the offensive line has held up enough but they also haven't faced um you know you're looking at all three of these teams uh that, that, that are able to just generate a ton of pressure and he's performed well in that respect the Lions are coming out of last game against the Falcons, sacking Desmond Ritter seven times. Aiden Hutchinson is a nightmare for opposing offenses. So I've got two leans here, okay? I think this game stays competitive, which is why I'd actually lean Lions money line because I, you could honestly see them winning this game by a point, like down to the wire by a point. If you like the spread here at minus one and a half, I'm not going to fault you for that whatsoever, uh, especially to get the reduced juice because if you're playing the money line, it's going to be – uh, you know, minus 124 in your best spot, minus 130, minus 132 in other spots. Make sure to shop around. I'll tell you how to do that in a second to always get the best odds. Because over the course of the season, getting the reduced juice on bets that you already like is going to save you a whole lot of money in the long run, without question. So I, I would lean Giants here. I think overall, you know, pound for pound, this offense can outduel the Packers. It's it's the best offense that the Packers have gone against this season as well, too, right? That isn't to say that Jordan Love has been terrible, okay? He's made some big plays in big situations. Totally understood. 
and getting reinforcements back like Aaron Jones and Christian Watson making his debut, that's absolutely huge for sure. But in the same breath, you're talking about a guy in Jordan Love and this team, defense specifically, especially if you're without Jair Alexander, you face Chicago. That team, broken. You faced Atlanta. Okay, you lost, by the way, gave up 25 points. Atlanta's offense is nothing spectacular, and they threw the ball against uh, the Packers. And then you face New Orleans as well. That is never a good offense, no matter who they put in there. And then, of course, Derek, uh, Derek Carr got hurt. You brought in Winston, and he was semi-efficient but did nothing outside of that this is the toughest test sam laporte is a stud already i'm on ross st brown great player got something on him in just a second and then in the backfield montgomery's expected to play you have jameer gibbs assuming that offensive line is almost fully healthy even despite uh Vitae being out you've got a two-headed monster in jameer gibbs and montgomery i think pound for pound as these teams stack up i know it's a home game for the packers as slight dogs I would lean the money line here for Detroit. Now, I want to get to a couple of props. And before we do that, if you guys haven't signed up on BetMGM yet, do yourselves a huge favor and take the $200 for free, okay? And then go about whatever business you were doing in your life outside of the one and a half minutes it's going to take you to sign up, deposit 10 bucks, and put 10 bucks on whatever the hell bet you're looking for. And once that bet settles, whether you win or lose, you're getting $200 from BetMGM simply for signing up, depositing 10, and betting it on whatever you want. Think of it this way. In any other realm of this life that we live, you have an opportunity to get $200 on $10 with zero risk applied to that. Because if you win your bet, you're still getting it. If you don't, you still have 200 bucks. You're going to snap make the decision to scoop up that 200, especially if someone said, I'm going to give you this, but it's only going to take you a minute and a half, two minutes to complete the process. You're in, you're out, you're $200 richer than you were before. I threw the link in the description and in the chat. So if you're making bets on this game tonight, maybe you're working with a small bankroll, do it on BetMGM and put that 10 on maybe a touchdown score or the prop we're going to talk about now. Link in the description and in chat for BetMGM. Let's talk about a prop. Jordan Love. Over 16 and a half rushing yards today. You can find this anywhere between minus 115 to minus 125. Again, shop around. Make sure you're finding the best odds. I think Detroit's going to be able to get some pressure against a very banged up offensive line for Green Bay. And if that's the case, I would expect Jordan Love to be flushed out of the pocket and forced to run. Now, this isn't a guy that's like Justin Fields or Jalen Hurts style or Lamar Jackson where he's running a ton. But I definitely think you're going to get opportunities. Last game, we saw nine rushing attempts for 39 yards and a touchdown. The week before that, more opportunistic than anything because he had a long run of 24 yards. But he picked that up, cleared 16 and a half easy, two runs for 23 yards on the day. Only three for 12 against the Bears, but they get no pressure. You don't have to do much against them. Just kind of run a vanilla offense and you'll be fine. And if you're looking at this Detroit defense, they actually forced Patrick Mahomes. You remember that game in week one that kicked the season off on Thursday? They forced Patrick Mahomes to run quite a bit. He cleared this number easily. Geno Smith in week two in that back and forth shootout, he cleared this number, went for 20 rushing yards, and he's not a run first quarterback either. The only one that didn't um, against the Detroit Lions throughout the, the first three weeks of the season, the only one who didn't was Desmond Ritter, and he's just, you know, no good. So give me over 16 and a half rushing yards on Jordan Love. And lastly, touchdown prop. Let's close it out with this. I'm on Ross St. Brown, anytime touchdown score. I've got to tell you, it is funny to me that he has the fifth fifth shortest odds to score a touchdown as an anytime score behind Gibbs, behind A.J. Dillon, behind Montgomery, and Aaron Jones. What do they all have in common? Obviously, they're all running backs. Obviously, you know, these guys can get attempts towards the goal line. It's easier for them to score. But I'm on Russ St. Brown last year, led the team in red zone targets with 22 of them. I can't tell you how many times he was tackled inside of the five, right? And then this season, already through uh, three games, he has four looks inside the red zone, only one touchdown. I'm on Russ St. Brown is going to see some positive regression in this respect. He's going to see some, he's going to get into the end zone. And not to mention, if you're missing guys in that secondary for Green Bay, it just hurts them even more. Look, I have respect for this secondary when it comes to Green Bay. I'm not saying I don't. But at the same time, St. Brown is too good. He has a 30-plus percent target share on the season. Uh, and you're getting this at a pretty good number. 
before we go, guys, last thing I will say on this, please, if there's nothing else you take from this video, if you want to fade every one of my picks, that's perfectly fine. Go for it. When you're betting touchdown props, make sure to always shop the odds. Any other props, whatever. You want to get reduced juice or not, I, whatever. I, I would suggest you do it. But on touchdown props, they vary wildly every week. I go to our website, oddshopper.com, uh, and I just type in the name and see the odds on every one of these. Like, here you go. In some spots, St. Brown plus 115 anytime score. DraftKings, how about this? FanDuel plus 145. So if you bet $100, you can either win 115 on it or you can win 145. Massive difference. I'm taking that every single time. I'm on Ross St. Brown, anytime touchdown score. Appreciate you guys hanging. Follow me over on Twitter at Lafayette underscore D, L-O-U-G-H-Y underscore D. We can chop it up when these videos aren't happening. And I'll catch you back here for the next one. Peace.